what we want to do with uh, tracking Parkinson's is get a huge study, over 2,000 people have got involved, and study this in, in detail and look for the variations and the patterns. You can see the level of detail we would need to go to and the size of project we would need to go to to get enough to group and understand the groups and what proportion of people have one type of Parkinson's versus another. Can people give me an indication of how long they think they had Parkinson's before it was actually diagnosed? Um, how long do you think, looking back, had you signs of Parkinson's that were perhaps there, symptoms from it, before it became evident and before you got a diagnosis? Five years. 20 years. Variation. Two years as well. Was there any? Another hand? Yes. About 12 months. So a big range there. 12 months out to 20 years. Now, when we're talking about prevention, then we're saying, look, some people might have as their first symptom a non-motor symptom. You wouldn't classically think of as Parkinson's, like loss of sense of smell or anxiety. And you might have it for something between 12 months and 20 years before you actually get a diagnosis. So this is where we are leading with the study, is to say, can we define that variation in a large and detailed study and understand the causes of that variation from one person to the next and then design new treatments that are targeted to those individual problems. It is the biggest study, the biggest in-depth detailed study and it has been running as you heard since 2012 and I'm pleased to say that Parkinson's UK has just recently extended the funding of it out to at least 2019. So it, it's already the largest and most detailed study, and it's now also going to be the longest. And this study depends on the network of centres and supported by a little known part of the NHS services that we should be so proud of, the UK Clinical Research Network, where we have research nurses who support the doctors and nurses working in the Parkinson Clinic to do the extra work needed for doing a project like this. So it is a long-term study, and we think that's very important. A lot of clinical drug studies for Parkinson's are quite short-term. Many of them are six months only. Very few go out to five years. Since we are involving people who've had Parkinson's for up to three years by the time they enter the study, and we are running the study for seven years, at least now is planned, we're going to get a 10-year picture at least of Parkinson's. And we're involving brothers and sisters of people with Parkinson's because we have an interest in the genetics, the DNA you see that we collect, test, and store. Uh, this DNA is very precious, and we collect two separate samples and send one to Wales and one to England in a reserve center. So we've got a backup copy. And we've got this genetic focus, and our brothers and sisters are those who are most genetically similar to us as individuals. So we think that is very important to have that linkage of people with Parkinson's and their brothers and sisters in genetic terms. And we are also collecting a blood sample which goes into the deep freeze and is used to look for a blood marker or biomarker of Parkinson's, which we hope will help earlier diagnosis more accurate diagnosis, and also measuring change over time. And that, I said, the deep freeze, it's not just your standard domestic freezer, which is minus 20. This blood requires to be stored at minus 80 and is stored and then transferred again to a central laboratory um, for testing in an additional study in our program. So, what we ask people, and those of you taking part in the study will be all too familiar with this, but just to explain to everyone, what we ask people to do is to come up on a regular basis, initially every six months, and then it falls back to every 18 months, and we ask people to complete a lot of questionnaires about the kind of symptoms that you all said that you've experienced in different ways, encompassing these non-motor uh, features, scoring the medication response, doing a memory test, which most people hate doing, 
unfortunately, but are happy to help us with. And looking over time, because we're doing these observations repeatedly over the whole nine years, looking at progression rates. that we are also asking for information both from people with Parkinson's and their brothers and sisters about environmental factors which are potentially linked to um, the risk of developing Parkinson's. You've heard about a couple of people saying their first symptom, uh, I think both were about five years, loss of sense of smell. Uh, we don't do it by smelling the armpit, we do it by a couple of different techniques of a scratch and sniff test or what we call the smelly felt pin test and we score um, people's preservation or degree of loss of sense of smell and we look across a range of other features, non-motor symptoms that can affect people with Parkinson's affecting the bowel function, affecting sleep, mood, anxiety, depression, bladder function as well, apathy, a feature in many people with Parkinson's, and uh, some more detail on pain. And I've said about a memory test, and of course there is a difficulty because as we get older our memory is not as good, and aging is, is the commonest cause of memory impairment, but we want to analyze in detail how much is age related and how much is Parkinson related. And I put memory in inverted commas because Really, the broader, more inclusive term is cognitive function, and memory is just one part of that. Short-term memory is usually affected much more than long-term memory, but other cognitive functions that can be affected are things like planning, planning a task, solving a problem, or working some item out in your mind, such as what's the route from here back out to the car park visual spatial function, all of these are cognitive functions. So our memory tests are detailed and are trying to find which particular category of cognitive function is affected or is not affected in the person with Parkinson's. Now we're also interested in progression and we have a, a great interest in people's onset date of when their first symptoms are as well as their diagnosis date and we know that fortunately Parkinson's never progresses rapidly, but we know that there are some people with Parkinson's who have a very slow rate of progression indeed, and others who are unfortunately somewhat faster. So we want to understand what are the drivers to that variation in progression rate. So what I'm trying to build up here is a description for you to explain why such a big study, why so many centers, why so many people, because of variation, because of different aspects like motor and non-motor. So that's an outline of the study, and I want to just move to a very current, um, just published research finding, which we think is significant and important. New research highlights the importance of cardiovascular health in Parkinson's. And what we did for this work is we combined the results from the Tracking Parkinson's study with the Oxford Discovery Study, and that gave us about 3,000 people with recent onset Parkinson's. And we looked at the presence of any vascular disease, and what that means is a previous stroke or mini stroke, or a heart attack, or angina. We looked at vascular risk, and that's the risk of having an event in the future of the sort that I have mentioned and we looked at the use of statin treatment. So statins are used generally to lower cholesterol. Now the first place that you would most obviously use a statin is if a person ha it was running a high cholesterol. And some of us genetically are likely to run a high cholesterol. What we found was that people with Parkinson's who had that increased vascular risk, so that's that calculated increased vascular risk have more problems with their walking and their memory than people who do not. And actually, this affects a lot of people. Over half of people with Parkinson's of recent onset had an increased future vascular risk. I've said how this is part of aging and therefore it's not surprising that these people tended to be older than those who did not have increased vascular risk. And this is where we then look at the statins and say, well, if they all had this increased vascular risk, 
how many of them were on treatment, which we know can help reduce that vascular risk? And the answer was only a quarter. So we think this is important because obviously we want to keep people's walking and mobility and memory as good as possible. And if we can identify that somebody has an increased vascular risk and might benefit from having that assessed and treated, it could help them reduce problems with their walking and their memory in the future. Now, what we've, we've done, we've shared this with the help of Parkinson's UK, we've shared this information with people with Parkinson's, and we have come up with a set of uh, notes to help guide people, and you can refer back to that on the Parkinson's UK website. But really, the, the, the key question is, in hearing this information, it may raise a level of concern and uh, if we say someone thinks, I am concerned about my vascular or cardiovascular health, what should I do? I think the first thing is don't panic. We are talking about a future risk of events that may or may not happen over the next 10 years. So this isn't an instant threat. This is a kind of long-term planning thing. So it's not, not, no need to panic. However, better not to ignore it either would be the message. If you feel some concern about your vascular health, what can you do? See your GP or your practice nurse and get an assessment of your vascular risk, and this will involve this calculation that I've talked about, which looks at your age and your blood pressure and your family history and some other health care factors, some other health factors for you as an individual. And if your calculated vascular risk is increased, then improvement in lifestyle like diet and exercise and where appropriate medication like statins could be given and could help reduce your future vascular risk and therefore help keeping your mobility and your memory as good as possible.